it's inflammation. It's simple as that. It's like I just live and sleep and dream always about fertility and trying to help everyone figure out why is there so much infertility in the world today? It's inflammation. But is it the sperm, the egg, the embryo, or the vessel to carry it in the uterus? This is the mystery. We're gonna look at the sperm and we're gonna look at the tubes, and we're gonna look at the hormones, we're gonna look at all these aspects, but the majority of time it comes back normal, unexplained, idiopathic they call it. Am I just an idiot? Well, sometimes I think we doctors are, because it's kind of shouting right at us. It's inflammation. It's simple as that. You've gotta reduce the inflammation on the sperm side, the egg side, and the implantation side. How do you do it? Well, you know all I talk about is kilts as keto. It's a lifestyle. It seems hard, doesn't it? But this infertility journey is hard. But any of us can do easy, right? I know you can do hard all day long. We have so many ideas that we've been sharing. Check out Kiltz's Keto Lifestyle or the Family Building Guide or simply go to cnwhitefertility.com. There's so much information there. Inflammation. I know you're wondering, what is it? Well, you know when you get a cut or a splinter and it's painful and swells and gets red. Mm. And then quite oftenly that stuff we can see, but there's so much of it happening inside of us that's silent. Let's talk about it, come on. Most of us don't understand that we're living a healthy lifestyle and we feel great, but we're suffering from infertility. That means there's something going on and something wrong in your body. What's usually happening is something deep in the bowels, deep in the pelvis. It's usually something I believe that you've eaten, which again is not quite understood by most of us. In general, the three to six meals a day is likely the deadliest thing we do. This is why fasting is the best thing to build your fertility. And fasting is simple. One meal, one snack every day. And changing nothing else but that. That might be all you need to do. So much of what I talk about is all related to how can you reduce inflammation and how we can overcome these causes that are unknown, or we find a specific abnormality of low sperm, abnormal morphology or motility. All of these things are factors. You gotta look at both the male side and the female side. Male is basically look at the sperm. Female Look basically at the tubes, ovulation, which is basically egg reserve. And how do you do this? Well, obviously a semen analysis, and you wanna look at the count, motility, and morphology. Make sure it's there. Even though it might look normal, it must be functional and you only know if you get pregnant and have a baby because it can always be the sperm even in a miscarriage. On the female side, to check the tubes, you're looking at a hysterosalpingogram, which will flush out the tubes and tell you if they're open or not. But you can also see the contour of the uterine cavity and look for fibroids or scar tissue or polyps. You wanna combine that with an ultrasound and a saline sonogram, which will basically tell you also the contour of the uterine cavity. But by doing these tests quite often, it flushes out the tubes and some women will simply get pregnant from that.
but it can tell you if there's a hydrosalpinx. So if we look at the uterus and the fallopian tubes come out of the uterus, here's the ovary. If the, if the dye comes out the tubes, it tells you it's open, but it doesn't tell you if there's scar tissue around the tubes. So this is where a laparoscopy may be needed to look through the belly button, to look in and around the uterus for scar tissue to the tube or endometriosis. So besides the dye test, a hysterosalpingogram, an ultrasound with the saline sonogram, and a laparoscopy, which ultimately is a little bit more invasive and maybe these are the first things you do before you get to this, but you also wanna look at an AMH level antimullerian hormone levels, and over one is good, over eight or five to eight may indicate that you have polycystic ovarian syndrome or metabolic disorder. But under one means diminished ovarian reserve, which may mean that you have damage to the ovaries and the eggs that may or may not be reversible. But we do know how important to look at this is. It'll tell us about ovarian reserve and egg function. But so many women with AMHs in the 0.5 range, by changing their diets, reducing inflammation, and taking a few supplements or other medications, may help boost that. So some basic, basic fertility evaluation I think is important for everyone. Talk to your gynecologist or your fertility doctor. They can help get some of these basic things to know what is your AMH? Are my fallopian tubes open? Does my ultrasound show if there's any fibroids or polyps? and get a sperm count early. We talked about the cause, and next we're gonna talk about the cure and the solution to help you on your fertile journey. Dr. Rob Kiltz, CMY Fertility. Check out our website, cmyfertility.com and drkiltz.com. God bless to all of you.